Hello people. So I am back with the second demonstration video of my eShop web application. Let's get into this. Let's start by looking at our code today. So today, I connected sign in and sign up parts of my web application to its database. So it is a quite obvious thing that when creating this kind of web applications, we have to deal with database connections so many times. I created this connection.php file to connect our web application to its database, so we don't have to bother with those database connections later in this process. As you can see, here is our database connection. When we need to work with our database later in this process, we can easily use this task called database. I'll get back to the code later. Let's go to our web browser. So in this current state, we can register users to our web application. Let's start this by adding a first name. Jane Doe at gmail.com. So let's add the account password. So let's add our mobile number. Let's select our gender as female. It's over. Let's sign up, shall we? Okay, as you can see, it was successful. Let's check out our database. Okay, here's the record of our registered user. So now there is no doubt that our database connection is working as it intended to be. You can see that users email, first name, last name, mobile number, password, gender id, join date, status here in this database. So I am back here on the index.php file. We are using Ajax method to carry our field information to the javascript side. So for this process, we need to add some ids to our input fields. So you can see those IDs here. Then I'm calling my JavaScript sign up function from here. So I'm going to my JavaScript file. So inside the sign up function, I grab those elements using those IDs. Then I'm keeping them as JavaScript variables for the ease of use. So I'm creating new JavaScript form data here. The purpose of creating this is to carry this data to the signup process.php file. Then I'm appending those grabbed field data elements to this form. Then I'm adding a new XML HTTP request to request from the signup process.php site. Then I'm checking this XML HTTP request stayed from this already state change. Then you can see I am sending my request to sign up process.php site using post method from here. Then let's go to sign up process.php. Then here on the sign up process.php, I grab those receiving data from the JavaScript site and kept them as variables. Then we are doing user sign up data validation process from here. This part checks are there any field characters on our first name field. If that field is empty, we can't continue the sign up process. If the first name field is empty, our web app will inform that person to fill out his first name using this notice. Please enter your first name. Then this part checks are there more than 50 characters on our first name field. If there are more than 50, we can't continue the sign up process. If someone fills out first name field with more than 50 characters, this will inform that person that first name mustn't contain more than 50 characters. Those same validation methods apply for the last name validation parts as you see. Then this part checks whether our email field is empty or not. If it's empty, our web app will give a notice as please enter your email address. Then this part checks out are there more than 100 characters on email field. If there are more than 100, this field give a notice as email address must have less than 100 characters. Then this is the PHP's own method to validate whether inserted email is valid or not. To do this validation process, they are actually using the at symbol of the email and dot of the domain name. If the email address is invalid, this notices email address is invalid, please enter a valid one. Then this part checks out whether the password field is empty or not. If it's empty, this gives a notice as please insert a secure password to your account. Then this part checks out does that filled out password contain more than 5 characters and less than 20 characters. If it is not like that, this will give a notice as password must be between 5 to 20 characters. 
then dispatch checks out whether the mobile number field is empty or not. If it is empty, this will give a notice as please enter your mobile number. Then dispatch checks out whether the mobile number contains 10 characters or not, because Sri Lankan mobile numbers only contain 10 numerals. If the entered one exactly doesn't have 10 numbers, this gives a notice as mobile number must contain exactly 10 numerals. Then this part checks out the validity of the entered mobile number. First two numerals must be 0 and 7, then third numeral could be 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7 or 8, then all other numerals could be between 0 to 9. So if the entered mobile number is not a valid Sri Lankan mobile number, this will notice as entered mobile number is invalid. Then this part checks out were inserted mobile number or email address already recorded on our database. So any of those are inside our database, this will notice as user with the same email address or mobile number already exists. Then this part is here to get the account creation date of our user. As you can see, we are getting the date and time of account creation, then the time zone. Then you can see the format that we are using to keep our date and time here. Then after that long validation process, we are sending valid sign-up data to the database to save them. So now the TDS sign-up part is over and our web application will give alert as success. Let's see how all of those validation stuff work in action. Let's go back to Chrome, shall we? Alright people, now we are back in Chrome. I'll try to sign up filling out all the fields except of the first name to see what happens. There you have it, that alert that I mentioned before. Let's try to fill out our first name field with more than 50 characters to see what happens. So let's try to sign up. So as you can see, we are getting the intended alert for this situation too. Let's try to sign up filling out all the fields except of the last name to see what happens. We are getting our alert as we were expecting, so that's nice. Let's try to fill out our last name field with more than 50 characters to see what happens. Obviously, we are getting our intended alert. Let's try to sign up without filling out our email field to see what happens. As you can see, we are getting our error alert. Let's try to sign up with filling out email field with more than 100 characters to see what happens. We are getting an error alert as we were expecting. Let's try to sign up with an invalid email address without the at symbol. We are getting our intended alert, so that's nice. Let's try to sign up with an email with an invalid domain name without a dot. No wonders that we are getting our error alert. Let's try to fill out our account password field with less than 5 characters, then with more than 20 characters to see what happens. So as you can see, we are getting the same error alert for both of those incidents. Let's try to sign up without filling out the password field to see what happens. We are getting our intended alert as you can see. Let's try to sign up without filling out our mobile number field to see what happens. As you can see, we are getting our intended alert. Let's try to sign up with the mobile number without exactly 10 characters to see what happens. As you can see, we are getting our intended alert. Let's try to sign up with the invalid mobile number but with exactly 10 characters. So we are getting an error alert for this situation too. That's nice. Okay, then let's try to sign up with some valid data. Alright, we are getting a success alert, which is cool. As you can see, our success alert is green and appears with a smiley face. But our error alerts were appearing in red with a cross mark. Let's see what those are all about. Let's go back to the code. As you can see here inside this view, we are using Bootstrap's alert danger class to get that red color to our error messages. For that cross mark, we are using one of those icons provided by Bootstrap 2. For those situations when we are getting a response text as success, we are changing Bootstrap's alert danger class with Bootstrap's alert success class to get that green color. And we are changing that cross mark to a smiley face icon that was provided by Bootstrap 2. And as you can see, I am using this JavaScript file to control those incidents. And that's all for today, folks. Stay tuned for third part. See ya.